Today, I think we're going to skip the lecture and we'll just listen to that music for an hour and a half. And <laughs> maybe out in the sunshine or something. <laughs> okay. Good. We'll ask them to cue that again next time, next class session. And it might motivate you to actually watch these DVDs occasionally. Okay. Okay, so we're going to continue on with particle kinetics. And as, I, um, as we did yesterday, we did a problem on, that was on a ramp and there was some friction involved. And I thought it would be good to go ahead and do another problem similar to that today. And, and then we'll do some other varieties of problems. So one that I see here, and don't worry about my penciling notes on there. Don't worry about reading that. I'll just tell a photo in on this so you can at least see the picture. So we have a 50-pound crate, it's sitting there stationary, and then we start applying a force P. And then we want to look at the acceleration that's experienced by that crate if there's no force, P is zero, pushing on the crate, if the force is 150 newtons, which is around how many pounds? Think of a newton as about a quarter pound. So 150 newtons would be about a quarter of 160, probably around 25 pounds or so. Okay, so not very much force. And then this 50 kilogram, 50 kilogram mass weighs about a kilogram is equivalent to in mass units, but kicking it over into pound units is about 2.2 pounds. So that, that thing weighs 110 or so pounds, doesn't it? Okay. And so if this force is 150 newtons pushing up there, it's only about a quarter of 150, so less than 40 pounds, right? And then if you kick it up into 300 newtons, that's significantly more force. So the question is, how does this block respond? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that. It's on a 15 degree incline, and we'll get going with it from there. So if we're careful with our sketches, we can make one drawing that turns into our free body diagram. So that's why I dotted the ramp angle and the horizontal, and then I can lay my block up here Fifty times nine point eight one is the weight, and be careful to always, always put that right. Get do it right away so that you don't forget and just in mistakenly carry along just fifty in your calculations if you're doing uh, forces. So make sure your fifty times nine point eight one is in there. Then they give us a coefficient of friction, which happens to be what. Point, point 0.2 for static. Okay, so we have mu sub static is point 0.2, and the mu kinetic is 0.15. Always less, at least in normal materials, always less, based on what we talked about in last, the last class session. Now, we have force P applied. And the question is, P takes on three different values. P equals zero, P equals 150 newtons, P equals 300 newtons. And then the question is, what's the acceleration of the block? Okay. So you have to place on here then, what's, what's missing in the drawing? A couple of things. Friction and normal force. Friction and normal force. So the ramp is going to exert a force counteracting a portion of the weight in the perpendicular to the ramp. And then there's a friction force. Now, if P in part A of the problem, B and C, in part A of the problem, if P is zero, then there's a tendency for this object to want to slide down the ramp 
overcome static friction, and then tendency possibly to slide down the ramp. And then if it starts moving, it's going to accelerate. That should make sense. So what we'll do in part A is we will assume that the friction force is opposing the tendency for motion. Now, we might want to change that later when we get down here to part C, when we have 300 newtons pushing up the ramp the tendency for motion may well be up the ramp. Now what we ought to do, probably, is do a little calculation and see how much of, see how much of this body weight is actually down the ramp, and then also see what the normal force is, and see what's necessary to overcome friction and actually cause the thing to move. So let me say that again, in other words. We, we want to take and figure out what the required critical force is as a portion of its body weight down the ramp that would be necessary to cause this to overcome the friction force, the required friction force. Okay. So first of all, we're going to look at the necessary friction force, or next, yeah, Let's call it critical, like I did yesterday. Necessary friction force critical to cause motion to impend. All right. So if we look up there and define, let's do let's do our axes. Again, like we did yesterday in the last, last session, up the ramp is x, perpendicular to the ramp and upward is y for our axes. Then if we sum forces in the y direction, and what did I suggest for the right side of the equation yesterday in the last session? Always right, m. A Y, but in that Y direction, the acceleration is zero. So get in the habit of always writing it and then zero out and if necessary make a comment such as no motion perpendicular to ramp. Okay. So then we go ahead and write our equation for the sum of forces y. So we have a positive normal force. And I oftentimes will put a plus sign there. That indicates that I've thought about it, the sense of it, by looking at my y-axis in the same direction as y. Minus 50 times 9.81 times cosine of our ramp angle. Anything else in that direction? I think that's it. That has to be equal to the right side of this Newton's second law, which is zero. So this tells us that the normal force is constant, which is 50 times 9.81 times the cosine of 15 degrees. If somebody had punched that on the calculator, make sure you're in degree mode. And cosine of 15 degrees is going to be a relatively small number, or excuse me, no, number near 1, because it's a small angle. And this is going to be up near 500. So I would expect something probably about 470. 473.8. Okay. So Newton's. So I'm not trying to impress myself. I just I'm trying to encourage you folks to do estimating, okay? Before you punch, because what happens when you punch? You you screw it all up half the time, and if you have a feeling for the values, then you you'd know if you were in radian mode, something would look screwy, or uh, there'd be some other indicator, okay? So that's the normal force. Now, what we're trying to do, though, is figure out what critical friction force would be necessary to cause motion to impend. So for motion to occur, 
the friction force must reach what value? And remember, remember what that concept is. That critical friction force, here's your, uh, let's see if I can draw that a little better. Pushing against your block, now I'm drawing it kind of horizontal here. Here's your normal here, and then in this direction is a, actually I drew it the other way. I'm going to go ahead and draw it like the ramp here. So we have the, the normal force here, and then we have the critical friction force here, which is going to give us an angle at which that normal sits. And this has to come up to this critical force value. And the angle is this angle right in there, right inside there. That angle is called phi, and the tangent of that is the critical angle. which is what we call mu. And that happens to be your critical friction force divided by that normal. We talked about that yesterday. So for that motion to occur then, we have to have our coefficient, our static coefficient, times the normal is the critical required force. Our friction coefficient was 0.2, and the normal force is this 473.8, and that's one-fifth of this, which is up near a little over 90. Punch that on the calculator, and you get what? 90 what? 94.78. Again, Newton's a force required. Okay. So that's for motion to occur, for it to break loose. What is the amount of the weight that is down the ramp? Let's come back over here for a second and look at this. See if they move the camera. There we go. If you come back over and look at this, then there's a portion of this body weight that is down the ramp, the friction force opposing that. Let's see what that value is. That's going to be 50 times 9.81 sine of the 15 degrees. Our 15 degree angle is the angle right inside there. So we'll write that now, sum of forces down the ramp in the x direction equals the mass times the possible acceleration in the x direction. Sum of forces in the x direction then, we have our positive friction force minus the component of the weight, 50 times 9.81 times the sine of the 15 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the plus P there, and that has to equal our mass, which was 50, times the acceleration in the x direction. Now what we're concerned with is this value right here. If you punch that out, what do we get? How much? About 126.95. 126.95. Okay. This friction force, there, there's that much force by the body weight down the ramp, right? And that's enough. Everybody see that? There's enough of that force down the ramp there to overcome this critical friction force of 94.78 to cause it to break loose. Does that make sense? 
And this is with P equaling 0. With P equaling 0. Okay. So that means the thing's going to start moving. The, the, the net unbalanced force, remember when we first started talking about this yesterday, it's a sum of forces is equal to the mass times the possible acceleration experience. So if there's an unbalanced force here, which there is, you can see it's a negative value, not very large, negative value. That's going to be the unbalanced force that's in the negative x direction down the ramp. That's going to yield a mass times an acceleration reading. Now, however, remember I drew the rough surface yesterday on how the, on how the ramp irregularities sort of tuck in with the irregularities on the bottom of the block. And they have to pop loose for the object to start to move down the ramp. So once it pops loose, this is what's needed to pop it loose, but then what happens? As soon as it's popped loose, that required down. friction value drops down a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're not going to use this static value here. This is what was needed to cause it to kick loose. We're going to go ahead and reduce this value by using the appropriate kinetic coefficient of friction and rewrite this. Okay, so I think I have enough room down here to continue. So the new value is going to be our kinetic coefficient of friction times that normal minus the 126.95 plus the P reading of 0. And that's going to be equal to the 50 times the acceleration. We now have 0.15. Our normal was 473.8 minus our 126.95, and that's got to be equal to the 50 times the acceleration term. You know, somebody do the arithmetic here. This is 15% of that large value. Ten percent would be 47. Half of that is 23. 47, 23 is 60 or so. And then take this away from it. What do you get? Excuse me? Acceleration itself. Well, well I want, I'll, I'll write both numbers. This product, this arithmetic here. Negative 55.88. Divided by our 50. So we have little, little, little more than negative 1 there. And negative 1.12. Yep. Negative 1.12. About 1.8. One, one, yeah. <laughs> okay, round off here. And our units are? Meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. Okay. So the object's accelerating down the ramp, not rapidly, but starting down the ramp. And this is roughly, oh, you know, 9.81 is a G. So it's down, getting down a little more than a tenth of a G or so. Okay. Not too significant.